guys, welcome back and we're going to look at a final Santana groove, again applying our chord ideas in Dorian. So we're now in the key of B Dorian, okay, so we're up here on the B minor chord. Now here what we're doing is we're using three chords, we're using a B minor, a D major and an E major, okay. So in the key of B Dorian that works out as being the root chord, okay. We've got the third which is a major, okay, and the fourth which is a major. Okay. Now, in relation to how that sits with the normal minor, the root would be the same, the third would be the same, but the fourth would be the minor. So we're kind of combining elements of both the natural minor and the Dorian to get this sound. Okay? So certainly when soloing over this, you can use a lot of the natural minor until you hit that four chord where you're going to be using the Dorian scale and need to use the Dorian scale. Alternatively, if it's perfectly in the entire B Dorian, okay, but we'll talk about that more in the next lesson. So, this groove is by far my favorite Santana groove, okay, and I'm just going to play it three time, you know, without all the rest of the band so you can hear what it sounds like. It goes like this one, two, three, four. Let's have some gain, why not? love that sound, it's just so kind of tribal, you know, it's really aggressive and you know you've got the drums kind of going boom, 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 all this kind of stuff, so brilliant one and great for kind of improvising over as well if you want to, if you want to give it a go. So it's a 16 note rhythm, so we're going to break it down into one E and a two E and a, remember that's the count for 16th notes, um, and I'll also break it down in, in, in other terms just for those of you that really don't like the counting thing, okay. So. First of all, in terms of the chord shapes and the way I'm playing it, I'm playing the B minor as you'd expect, except I use my thumb over the top, but whatever you prefer. For the D, rather than going to this, I'm literally just going to take my first finger flat against the seventh fret, D, G, and B string. Okay? It's a lot easier in terms of the speed of change here to go from there to there, rather than going from there to there which at the rate and the speed that this song goes, that's going to be a mammoth task. So I'm going from the B minor to the D. When I go to the E, I'm just simply using my third finger or little finger to play those three notes of the E. Again, I'm just not touching the root note. So basically, in terms of chord shapes, it's just B minor, D like that, and E like that. So really simple, okay? You've just got to learn to mute the strings around those three. Okay, so that might be a little bit of a challenge, but it's a really good challenge to do, especially as you're getting more advanced as a guitar player. So, let's get down to the rhythm. I'm going to do it nice and slowly once round first. It sounds like this. Okay. So we've got a lot of chucka chuckas. Basically, there's almost no white space. There's a little bit, but pretty much if you're not hitting the chord you're going okay so we're going to go one e and a because that's your first bit so we're going to hit the b minor and then stop it dead and then go up down and then hit the next up stroke on the b minor again one e and a so once you've done that one e and a then we're going to do two more um, crunchy hits, one E and a, two E, like that, okay? And then we're going to hit your D chord, okay? So that's on the downstroke, okay? One E and a, two E and, okay? Again. Okay, then you repeat exactly the same thing again. Okay, so those two together sound like this. And counted through, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, so that's bar one. Bar two, you do exactly the same thing again, but one time round. One E and a, two E and a. 
and then for the second half of the bar, so from the three, you just simply grab the E and you just go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So three E and a four E and a, like that, okay? So bar two sounds like this. Okay, so the two together, therefore, nice and slow with the count. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, and we start again. Okay, so let's try that with the uh, the actual drum machine, so we so we'll start at 60 BPM. We might go gradually slower and slower, just to put it at a couple of paces. So those of you that find this stuff really hard, which is really common because it's a tricky thing, 16th note strumming, um, we'll slow it right down for you. So this is 60 BPM first, which is quick. Look at that arm movement. One E and a two E and a. Okay, here's what it sounds like. Two. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, let's slow it down a little bit, shall we? So let's go right down to 40 BPM. So this is a lot slower. It's gonna sound like this. Two, two three, four. Remember your aim and your target is to actually get that played along with the track. So if you go through to the tab, you'll see it, the entire video that you can play through, okay? Now, the only thing to mention is that there's two sections. One is where you're aggressive like that. You know, just giving it everything. And then at some point, you know, about eight bars in, and you know, you'll hear it really clearly as it gets through to the track, everything drops down. And you'd want to do exactly the same rhythm, but just dynamically shift it to... You know. I'm doing exactly the same groove, I'm just really relaxing the whole thing and loosening the grip on the plectrum so that I get a lighter sound and therefore dynamically bringing it down only to bring it right back up again. You know, follow the track. It's very much a case of using the ears, keeping, it, keeping them open so that you hear when it drops down and when it comes back up again. That's an art form to itself, so keep listening out for that. So hopefully you can get that down and hopefully you're starting to understand this concept of a Dorian chord progression. And next time what we'll do is we'll bring everything together in this Dorian idea before moving on to do another Santana solo. And what I mean by that is we're gonna to bring together the chords, the harmonized chords I should say, and the Dorian scale and how to improvise with the two of them.